What's going on everybody? This is the Roaming Prepper channel and I'm your host Pete. Thank you for joining me today. So my last uh, Saturday sit rep was a bit somber. There was a lot of serious things going on in the world. But something else popped on my radar and I'm like, that's kind of in my wheelhouse. So I'm going to be right back and we're going to talk about the hypersonic missile threat. Is it really a threat or is it a lot of puffery or maybe a little of both? Let's talk about that. Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining the Roaming Prepper channel and don't forget like and subscribe and if you have questions that I don't address during the premiere, which I will premiere this, put it in the comments below. So uh, hypersonic missiles, we've been hearing a lot about it. Um, a lot of folks noticed that there were weird National Guard drills going on all over the East Coast and even the West Coast. And some folks, other channels have tied this to the hypersonic missile threat. And that's, uh, that may not be wrong, right? That's a completely legitimate thing to, to think. So what exactly is hypersonic missiles? Well, I actually had to do some digging, guys, because it has been a hot minute. So I dug up my undergraduate Fundamentals of Flight book from uh, my, my, uh, my undergrad years. And I can tell you right now that even in the early 90s, we were already talking about hypersonic tech. And I'm pretty convinced that we already had some hypersonic stuff out there. So is, is it a problem that certain countries that don't like us have this technology? It could definitely be a problem. Is it a case of the US of A not having the tech or being left behind? I don't think so. I think actually the opposite. I think they're trying to catch up to us, but we're not saying anything. We're whistling Dixie in the dark going do 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 do. We don't have those things. We have no idea what you're talking about. I think I think there are certain toys in the inventory that we have that are freaking other people out. So one, I want to lay that one to rest. My personal opinion, considering the fact I had to take tests and write a small paper on hypersonics many, many years ago, I'm pretty sure the US of A has its fair share. Now, what does that mean for us as preppers, right? Well. If you're of a preparedness mindset, you're trying to stay ahead of the curve on disasters. You know, you want to pay attention to weather. You want to pay attention to politics and inflation, right? We try and keep ahead of this kind of stuff. How do you keep ahead of a hypersonic missile? Do I think that Russia or some other country would be nutty enough to actually launch one at us with a nuke on it? I would think not because the retaliation would be horrendous. Even if you assume the US of A had no hypersonics, we have a boatload of submarines and other toys all over the world that nobody really knows where they are at the moment. So if someone launches at us, we're gonna pummel them within 10 minutes. The minute the thing gets detected, there'll be a massive counter-strike on that country. Nobody, I would hope, is that insane. Now, where could it be a threat? Conventional. Think of it, the Tomahawk missile was used in the Gulf War and it's been used extensively, right? Cruise missiles do a phenomenal conventional warfare job of taking out strategic targets and reinforced targets. Now take that Tomahawk, which is a big ugly airplane looking missile and put it on crack and that's a hypersonic missile. You don't even need a nuke. You could literally put a big conventional bomb in there and launch it and just basically blow a hole in some piece of infrastructure. And that's where this kind of mess, uh, this kind of technology can really do damage on the battlefield. Let's think about that. Let's just say, hypothetically, the war in Eastern Europe expands, right? Now NATO's involved, China's involved, NATO, Russia, they're all in a big cat fight, right? What would I do if I was Mr. Vlad, right? I would be like, you guys need gas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop every one of your ports that intake oil and gas from your buddies in the US of A and your friends in Mexico, and I'm gonna screw up all your ports simultaneously. And oh, I just launched them so you have like 90 seconds to respond. And next thing you know, there's a bunch of ports on fire. That would screw up a war effort. Kinda see what I'm saying here? 
you want to screw up the U.S. of A., you know, take out some refineries, screw up a highway. That's where I think this can really do some damage without it escalating to the apocalypse. And honestly, I hope I'm wrong, but that might be how it gets used. So how does this affect us, right? Well, think about it. ICBM, the old Cold War intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? They launched, they made a big flare, satellites, radar, everything saw this thing going into the air. And now defenses are trying to shoot it down. And then, you know, 45 minutes, an hour later, it drops on its target. Um, now we're looking at under 20 minutes or less. I don't know how fast, you know. Keep in mind, uh, the SR-71 Blackbird was going 2,000 miles an hour at Mach 3.3 at its altitude. Uh, hypersonic is over Mach 5, so this is an ungodly rate of speed. Um, it leaves us with very small windows to react to an attack. Um, again, I would think it would be conventional before it went atomic, so what you're looking at is targeted uh, strikes on docks, on infrastructure, on grids, on refineries, stuff like that. Um, that kind of stuff could cause problems, but think about it. You guys are already preparing for this, right? Barring the missile hitting your house, God forbid, you're already prepped for this. You should be prepping for blackouts. You should be prepping for inability to get food or pay for food. You should probably have a little bit of cash, a little bit of silver, however you diversify, so that in the event you can't swipe your card, you can put a 20 down and go get a loaf of bread and some other goodies at the store. So you're already kind of prepping for hypersonic missiles. Barring a nuclear device, we're already doing this. So A, I would say, don't freak out that America's getting left behind. I promise you we're not. Uh, and this is a guy who hasn't touched this stuff in many years, but I know for a fact we were writing about it back then. And um, two, they're trying to catch up to us. Three, we're already kind of prepping for this stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, don't have a heart attack about this. Is it important to be aware of it? Absolutely. So you may want to run some drills, even if it's on the tabletop with a glass of bourbon or a coffee, whatever your drink of choice is. You may want to ask yourself, well, hey, if they have a hypersonic attack on, say, Manhattan and they take out the bridges, how do I get to the mainland? How do I get from A to B? If they hit the refinery that's, you know, an hour away, will the wind bring the chemical and burnt material to my house? How do I plan for that? Can I seal up my house until the debris settles and blows away so then I can go about my activities? If you have to travel, hey, am I traveling somewhere and I'm, I'm flying in, if we get attacked, they take out the airport, how do I get home? But these are things you should already be planning for if there's an EMP, if there's a blackout, a hack, whatever it is. So you guys, we're already doing this stuff. So instead of freaking out, just take a minute to instead run a tabletop exercise. What would I do if a conventional missile hit the refinery? or took out a part of our grid and put me in the black in a blackout for a week, right? That's where I see these hypersonics doing a lot of damage. Now, is the potential for an atomic attack viable? Yeah, it exists, but I would think nobody wants to go there because as stupid or arrogant as our leaders are all around the world, they're not crazy people. They nuke us, they're going with us, and they can only live so long in their bunkers before they have to come out. So guys, ladies and gentlemen, don't freak out. Instead, read up on this, understand how quick they can get here, what potential targets are, and then plan accordingly. And if you're near what would be a potential target, make your plan like an evac plan for a hurricane, but you're gonna have to do it quick. How fast can you get out if you're by a big target? How fast can you get your house, get your emergency stuff, get your pets, your kids into your vehicles, and get the hell out of Dodge? And it may be something, maybe a fun road trip, right? Throw your get home bags in a truck, take the kids to the mountain and see how fast you can get there without getting a speeding ticket. In any case, ladies and gentlemen, that's my take on the hypersonic threat. Uh, plan accordingly, run the exercises, don't freak out. Instead, take the time to understand what this tech is and how it will likely be used. And I really feel a conventional attack will be the way they'll go if it happens. You guys be safe, God bless. Think about it, prepare accordingly, and I will see you later. Godspeed.